in this video I will be discussing how to find out the electronic configuration of atoms. First, can you answer this simple question? Which atom has electron arrangement 2, 8, 1? If you need more time, please pause the video and think. The correct answer is sodium, which is option 4. If you got the answer correct, you have basic knowledge about basic electronic configuration. However, today we will master electronic configurations at three different levels. Level 1, year 9, which is equivalent to Cambridge Lower Secondary Stage 9. Level 2, year 10 and 11 which is equivalent to Cambridge IGCSC. Level 3, year 12 and 13, which is equivalent to Cambridge ASA level or Edexcel ASA level. Part 1, year 9. Let's begin with the basics. First, you must know about the periodic table. Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian chemist, developed the periodic classification of the elements. Here is the latest periodic table. If you pay attention to these boxes, each represent a certain type of element. For example, let's take a look at this element. How can you read the information here? First of all, we must remember that the depiction of the atoms in the periodic table can change according to the publisher. Nevertheless, if you know how to read the information, it should not be a problem. In the center, we have the symbol of each element with one or two English letters. The first letter always must be capital or uppercase. If there is a second letter, it always must be lowercase. For example, the element carbon has only one letter and the symbol is capital C. The element magnesium has two letters and its symbol is capital M and simple G. Now let's pay attention to the numbers we see in this box. There are two numbers in two different places inside the box. As I mentioned before, the location of these two numbers could be different according to the publisher of the periodic table. Despite the fact, the bigger number is always the mass number and the smaller number is always the atomic number. The mass number of an atom is the total number of protons and neutrons in its nucleus. So, what is the proton or a neutron? These are what we call subatomic particles. There is actually one more subatomic particle which we all know, electron. Here is a table with the basic information about these three subatomic particles. The symbol for proton is P and the symbol for neutron is N and the symbol for electron is E. Some of these subatomic particles have charges. Protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. Neutrons on the other hand are neutral which means they have no charge. What about mass? The mass of a proton is 1 AMU one atomic mass unit. Now what is an atomic mass unit? An AMU or an atomic mass unit is a certain type of measurement or, or a measurement unit that we use in chemistry just like kilograms and grams that we use in our day-to-day -day life. Now the mass of a neutron is also equivalent to the mass of a proton, which means the mass of a neutron is also one atomic mass unit. On the other hand, electrons are extremely small and light. The mass of an electron is 0.000549 atomic mass unit. Therefore, in year 9, we consider the mass of an electron as negligible. So in an exam, if they ask you the mass of an electron, you can even write negligible and that answer must be considered correct. So, back to this. The atomic number, the small number 
of an element is equal to the number of protons that must present in that atom. So, according to that, carbon must have six protons. The mass number of an element represents the number of protons and neutrons in that atom. So, if you do a small calculation, we can find out the number of protons and the neutrons in the certain atom. For example, here, carbon has the atomic number 6 and the mass number 12, which means carbon should have 6 protons and subtracting 6 from 12, it should also have 6 neutrons. But how can I find out the number of electrons that carbon has? The number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons or the atomic number. So, according to that, carbon must have 6 electrons. Now let's go to our main topic, electronic configuration. And now you must know how to find out by simply looking at the periodic table what the electron number of the atom is. In electronic configuration, we describe how electrons are arranged in an atom's orbitals, essentially mapping out their location around the nucleus. Now, as I said, around the atom's orbitals. So what are orbitals? In year 9, we also call them shells. These shells are like the orbitals of planets. In the middle, we have the masses, especially protons and neutrons. These two types join together and creates the nucleus of an atom. Around the nucleus, the electrons are moving freely in circular motion. Different electrons move at certain distances, creating a certain orbit. And the way electrons move around the nucleus of an atom has a certain pattern. In electronic configuration, all we pay attention to is that pattern. There can be maximum seven shells an atom can have. Honestly speaking, there aren't just seven shells. There can be an infinite number of shells. However, for now, let's not focus on that. Electrons always get filled, starting from the first shell and moving through second, third and so on. But remember, not every shell can have the same number of electrons. The first shell can have maximum two electrons. And the second and third shells can have eight electrons. Fourth shell can have more electrons, which at this level is not much important. Because for year nine, we will be only focusing on maximum 20 elements. So, let's do an exercise to practice this. Here is sodium, which has atomic number 11, which means sodium must have 11 protons and 11 electrons. Now, I need to arrange these 11 electrons according to our rule. Imagine I have 11 marbles and I need to put them into the shells according to the rule that we mentioned before. First shell, we can add only two. Maximum, there can be two electrons in the first shell. So I will put two marbles or two electrons into the first shell. How many marbles do I have in my hand? I have nine left. So I can put eight marbles or eight electrons into the second shell. Maximum it can handle is eight. So I will put eight electrons into the second shell. How many marbles or how many electrons do I have left? Just one. So that has to go to the third shell. Very easy. Just one more example. Oxygen has eight electrons. So here is how they feel in the shells. First shell, two electrons. I have six left. Second shell, I can put eight maximum, but I have six. So I will put those six into the second shell. Perfect. So now we know how the electrons get filled into the shells. Now let's learn how to write the electronic configuration, which is not that difficult. All you have to do 
just by putting commas, write down the number of electrons in each shell chronicologically. So the electronic configuration of sodium is 2, 8, 1, and the electronic configuration of oxygen is 2, 6. Now it's your turn. Here are four questions. I want you to write down the electronic configuration of all these four atoms. Pause the video for a few seconds and then check your answers. Here are the answers. Now in the exam, the question can be either straightforward or tricky. Sometimes they can ask you the electronic configuration of a certain atom. As an example, they will say, find out the electronic configuration of chlorine. Always remember, in the examinations, they will provide you a periodic table at the end. So use that as your reference. But now let's focus on something a bit tricky. Here is the question. How many shells does organ have? Now, by looking at the periodic table, we can see organ has the atomic number 18. So, it must have 18 protons and 18 electrons. So let's put them into the shells. 18 electrons. First shell, 2 electrons. Second shell, 8 electrons. We have already put 10 electrons and we have 8 left. Third shell, third shell can have 8 electrons. So third shell, 8 electrons. And we are done with that. So how many shells did we fill? 3 shells. So even though they try to be tricky, the answer is always very simple. So try to use the theories that we have learned and you will be good to go. So that's it about electronic configuration related to year 9. However, this gets more complicated when it goes to IGCSC, which means year 10 and 11, and ASA level, which means year 12 and 13. That is the end of this video. Stay tuned for the upcoming two videos. Video 2, Electronic Configuration for Year 10 and 11 and Video 3, Electronic Configuration for Year 12 and 13. That's it for this video and see you in the next video.